We are performing a carpal tunnel release on our right hand today. Now this is a revision. Let me know when it's up. This patient had a right carpal tunnel release done open years ago. We're up. We're up. All right, so I'm using an elastic band to exsanguinate the arm. And um, now we have our tourniquet up, which is on her upper arm. And take that. So now we're going to, we've already prepped and draped everything. You've got to be careful here. You don't want to cut a finger off. This is a pretty powerful scissor. It literally could easily cut a finger. So you have to be very, very careful as you're doing this. Now this patient has pretty bad atrophy of her um, DNR muscles. Now this is not spine surgery, but we broadcast it anyway because it's ner related to nerves and I'm a neurosurgeon and why not? Better than not broadcasting. We have the ability, the technology, we might as well use it. All right, I've already marked it out. I wanna infiltrate. I'm gonna use a little local 2% uh, marcaine without epi. Okay, and this is just gonna help the patient in terms of pain and helps the anesthesiologist not have to use quite as much anesthetic. So I've marked out where the carpal tunnel is, okay? And I'll make a few notes here. I never, um, we, we put in two cc's. So I'm gonna use a number 10 blade. All right. I never go, this is the wrist crease here. I never go past the wrist crease, proximal to the wrist crease. Okay, you never wanna go proximal to the wrist crease. So, let go. You can actually see, can you guys see the wrist crease here? Yes, sir. Yeah, so these are the wrist creases. You wanna be just distal to them. And then you never wanna go onto the palmar side. I see so many surgeons cut, make this, make this incision the wrong way. So anyway, she's already had one done. I don't know what we're gonna find but I'm hoping we find a nerve that wants to be unpinched. Okay, incision has been made. I always use this retractor. I make the incision just long enough for the retractor. Oh yeah, I do need to scrape away the, the fat. There's a little fat pad under the skin. And again, this patient has had this surgery before, so there's gonna be a lot of scar tissue. This is gonna be a little different than the next case we're gonna do. We're actually doing two carpal tunnel releases today. The first one is a revision. The second one is a fresh case. So, yeah, the retractor won't stay in because of the scar tissue. So, um, I need that 15 blade. I'll take that now. And we have a, a bovie. Just, just want to have it as backup. Um, uh, no, don't, uh, don't open it. Just have it available, just in case I need it. Normally, we don't use a bovi or a bipolar for the surgery because there's no bleeding. The reason there's no bleeding, and of course, normally there would be. Let me have a, a ten. I need to open this just another millimeter or two. There's no bleeding because we have a tourniquet on, on her upper arm. So, all right, there it is, stuck there. So we need to come down to the nerve. And yeah, th this thick, look, there's the thick ligament right there, look at that. It's kind of somehow reattached and you can see the nerve there. I need the woody. I just wanna get above the nerve and feel Right there, there it is. So that's the membrane, and that's what I need to cut, okay? And just below it is the nerve. So I'm gonna get a heavy scissor. Not that one, a, a Metz.
I go above the nerve and I'm gonna snip this thick tendon. And there's the nerve. See that, the yellowish thing right there? Show them. Yeah, that's it. Well, let me let me show them. Let me have the pen field. Can you guys see this? How's the view there, Kevin? Kevin, you got to A 15 blade. <clears throat> anyway, we see the nerve. Tuck, please. She's got a little jelly there. Probably from her old blood from last time. There we go. Completely decompressed. You really don't have a feed, huh? Yeah, from the He's infected one. This is the strongest, best suture. Why? Because the outer suture, the outer bite out here and here is what pulls everything together and takes the tension off the edge. So you don't get an ugly scar, you get a beautiful scar. And then the inner suture, the inner bite, pulls the uh, up, the skin edges up. So they come together and they uh, they kiss and they go up. So there's there's no tension on there. You understand? understand? That's the secret to having a beautiful scar. No tension. Cut it long. Um, so you want to close the next one? I can. Yeah. All right, so you start wide. You grab the edge. You start wide. Do not hit the nerve, whatever you do. Okay. And you come underneath. You see the thick dermis? Yes, sir. You come underneath it in the fat, okay? And then you go back onto the other side and come out wide. So it's wide to wide. Remember, you come by it closer. closer. Narrow, narrow, okay. yeah. I think it's called a vertical mattress or a horizontal mattress. I can't remember which one it is, but 
that's a great stitch. And then you come, you gotta go in at the same, just under the thick dermis. Okay. And I usually do four for a carpal tunnel. My incision is always the same length. It's two wraps, the first one, and then one wrap afterwards. See that? You want to try to get that out of there. You go alternating, you know? Yes, sir. See how it alternates the suture? Yes, sir. And you got to cinch it down because this is what? Monofilament. Say it. Monofilament. Does monofilament have more memory or less memory than a braided stitch? Yes. More memory. In other words, when you tie it, it wants to untie. The braided stitch just stays where you put it because it has less memory, because its fibers are skinnier. This is a very thick fiber. You understand? <sighs> simple things. Can't even get the simple things right. Like video. What do you have, the eye in the sky? Yes, sir. Well, I guess it's better than nothing. Did you get to see the nerve at all? Let's see a little bit, that's good. It actually went easier than I thought it would. That was very surprising. And I did find, help me, I did find significant compression of the nerve. So it, it, it wasn't just a, a dig around and pray. It was actually, uh, there was a re, um, compression of the nerve. And there was a nice plane above the nerve. Yeah, it's fine. Just cut one if you have to. All right, remember how to dress this? Yes. Not yet. Keep the tourniquet up until I tell you. So it's always four stitches. Okay, see that? It's always four. And the other thing this does here, Luis, if, you know, you're the one who takes these stitches out so you can appreciate it. By doing this type of a stitch for this carpal tunnel, yes, you can just find this loop right here and cut it, and then you can pull the knot out. It's easy. Otherwise, it could, you know, you could bury the suture and whatever. It's a pain in the ass. So. We need about, we need to start wrapping the hand. Well, I'm just trying to figure out those, why we have this whole thing on our arm. Um, I know that's what we've always done. It's like, whatever you call it, cut it. We're done with the suture. Do we have a polysporin? Who, what? Okay, um, I'll cut it because I don't want you to cut her finger. I don't think you would, but. So you always want to slide in here and look, never just cut. And you should always feel and see that you're just, just there below the, the material. Again, here, so you can easily catch the skin and wrinkle it, like there. Yeah. So you want to make sure you, I always lift yeah, up right. hard, like hard, and make sure I slide back and forth. I slide and lift, make sure I don't cut the skin. And this scissor is designed not to cut skin. This is used by paramedics. Uh, Luis, you don't need to do the whole arm in the future. Just do this around, up to around here. Okay, yeah, because this is, just taking a long time. And she's got that skin that just wants to wrinkle. 
Who is this woman? I know. For those of you who don't know, this is my mom, my mother, the woman who birthed me into this world. How many surgeons will operate on their family? Huh, Rita? Not many. I've never met one besides myself. I'm sure there are a few out there. I just don't trust anyone else. All right, at this point, we're going to put some tweeners. Uh, yeah, wet, dry. Just real quick. That's good. Yeah, tourniquet has to stay up until we get the ace bandage on. Tweeners. So these are called tweeners. Are you still rolling? She has syndactyly. Her fingers are stuck together. She was born as a mermaid. Look at that. I have to separate them. Oh my God, that's so stuck. All right, keep going. Help me out here. Oh my God. Yeah. All the way to the base. Has to go to the base. This has to be done properly. There are little rules you have to follow here. Go ahead. All the way to the base. There, I'm helping him. Yep. And you leave the long part in the palm because it's creating a palm cushion. And that's what you want. A big palm cushion. And the reason, no, 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 we need one for the thumb. The reason you do this, folks, is if you don't do this and you put the ace bandage on, it's going to squeeze the fingers together for, for three days and the patient's going to be in a lot of pain. All right, you can put a few extra in the palm. And now we want to do our curlix. I need you to hold it up. Yeah, so we're going to do this. Now, you, this does not want to be too tight. Okay, and you want to go through the fingers and you want to get some separation between those fingers. Uh, sorry, not, not with this, but between the thumb and the, and the other fingers. Good. She has a nice manicure. I will, I will have her share her manicurist with you. Yeah, and look, you never want to put too much here on the, on the pinky with too much pressure. So you want to keep it very light. Otherwise, you squeeze their fingers together. It starts hurting. Uh, huh? Yeah. All right, Ace. Thank you. So now we've done, we've done the uh, Curlex, and now we do an Ace. And again, a lot of people don't know how much tension to put on this Ace. You don't want to put much. It's very little, okay? It's just, just you really want, don't want the arm expanding. It's not like you're trying to squeeze it and get orange juice out of it. You don't want the, the arm expanding, okay? Because if it expands, you know, it's going to get swollen, obviously. It's going to expand, and it's going to hurt. So, so what I like to do now is I like to look here. Yeah, yeah, take it down now. So you want to check this area right here where the pinky is. And I usually like to do what's called a relief cut because this is not an area that swells too much, obviously. But you don't want a lot of pressure on that pinky. So that's good. Okay? We're good. Take the tourniquet down. Hope you enjoyed the surgery. We'll do another one in a 30 minutes. You want to keep that arm at your heart level and higher while you recover for three days. Dr. Patel, how are you? Dr. Patel is going to do a knee injection. Yeah. All right.